Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be testing out Primark makeup. So about a week ago, I headed on down to Primark and I got myself a nice box of makeup. And I believe that I think everything apart from the blusher is from the PS range. So before we begin, I have already done my eyebrows off camera because I could not get an eyebrow product because the only ones they had, I just, I 100% knew that they just wasn't going to be my shade, so I thought, I just leave it, leave it out. But I am going to start with foundation, so I'm using the PS My Perfect Colour Double Coverage Matte Foundation in Porcelain. Now, I already know that this is going to be way too light for me, but at the time, this was the only light shade that they had. All of the other ones were for dark skin, so... I might come out of this looking like a ghost, but we're just we're just gonna try it. I'm just gonna open it up then. Ooh, okay. That's one of the ones that you have to pour out, so this is gonna go horrifically. They're coming out. Come on. Oh, okay. Ooh! Something tells me that that is way too much. So I'm just gonna pop this into my skin. Or attempt to and I'm not gonna lie I'm already looking like a ghost but we're gonna make it work hopefully the bronzer can um save the day let's say so it might be because I have way too much foundation going on my face but this feels like really wet and I'm not gonna lie it doesn't feel the nicest going onto my skin but so now that I've blended that in the coverage looks pretty good pretty good it's definitely um evened out my skin tone covered any spots and blemishes the only problem I'm having with this is that it seems to be clinging to the dry patches on my skin and to be fair it does say that it is a matte foundation so going in with this having dry skin was probably my fault but I have a feeling if you have combination or oily skin I have a feeling that this could actually be quite a good foundation for you so so next I would normally do concealer but I didn't actually get a concealer because again they only had dark shades in it and I wasn't about to put a brown concealer under my eyes for this video so I'm just going to go in with one of my concealers quickly and I'll be right back so I have also just powdering my face down quickly because I didn't actually get a powder because I thought all oh, powders they do the same thing high-end drugstore Primark I figured that it wasn't really that big of a deal so I skipped out on that one to uh, you know save a bit of money but next I am going to try the PS bronze glow bronzer in the shade what shade are you fearless so hopefully this can bring some life and some warmth back to my face because I look like a ghost. So I'm just going to go in with my fan brush to use this as a contour to start with and then I'll probably use it to bronze up the rest of my face. So I'll just move the wig out of the way and just start applying. Okay, that's more pigmented than I was expecting it to be. It's quite um, a warm colour, not really the sort of colour you'd want to contour with, but here we are, contouring with it. So, I mean, it's doing the job, it's bringing some life back to my face. Hmm, that looks even worse on camera. <laughs> oh dear, <laughs> I swear, I can do makeup about average but this doesn't look too great on camera. I'm not going to lie, but it's bringing some warmth back, so I'm gonna go in with my powder brush quickly and I'm just gonna bronze up the rest of my face. So I have just warmed up the rest of my face and I'm not gonna lie, I'm really impressed with the pigment of this. And for a bronzer, this is a really, really nice shade. It's not too dark, it's not too orange, and it just it's sitting on my skin really nicely so not gonna lie I am gonna be using this again I'm very impressed with that just a quick side note 
I have just realised that I have not been telling you the prices of any of the products so far. So the foundation that I used is £5 and the bronzer that I just used is only £1 and for £1 that is a hella good bronzer. So next I am going in with the Floral Days blusher in the shade Bloom. So this is what it looks like. It's quite a nice sort of pinky corally colour which really for a blusher it sounds just about right to me because I don't like blushes that are too pink, too orange, just somewhere in the middle and this looks like the perfect shade for me. So I'm just going to go in with my powder brush and I'm just going to dab at it. Quite a lot actually came off of that. I'm just going to apply it to my cheeks. Ooh, okay. I was gonna say it's quite subtle, but then I went in with more. And now I think I've gone a bit overboard. I don't think you can see with my lights, so I am going to quickly just turn them down so that you can see what the blusher looks like. I don't know why I'm adding more. I don't wear this much blusher ever, but we're here, we've done it. Just keep going. This is really pigmented, actually. It's a really pretty colour. I don't think I have anything bad to say about this. And I believe the price of this, I haven't got the price on it, but I think it was three pounds, I want to say. For three pounds, that is so cheap and this is so pigmented. So for the last part of my face, I have bought the PS Gold Lust Highlighter and this is what it looks like. So it's sort of quite a nice gold bit of pinky champagne. It's kind of got a bit of everything in there. So if you like a very warm, goldeny, champagne-y kind of highlighter, I think that this might be the one for you. And this is also three pounds. Is it gone? I'm pretty sure all the highlighter I just put on my face has kind of just gone into the air. I'm gonna dip back in and try again. There's a lot of fallout on this. Okay, okay, it's doing something. I think if you like quite a blinding highlight, this seems like the sort of highlighter that you have to build up. It does build up. But if you like a subtle highlight, then one layer of this would probably do the job for you. I'm just going to put a little bit on my nose. <laughs> it's very powdery. <laughs> just feel like I just like sniff cocaine or something. Ooh. <laughs> So I'm not sure how well you can see the highlighter on the camera but it is a very pretty shade, it's definitely buildable and if you want a highlight that stands out more and pops more you definitely need to do a few layers of this. The only thing I don't like about this highlighter is how chalky and powdery it is. You tap it in there is so much fallout and then when you put it on your face it's just, it's literally like you've just inhaled a bunch of dust. So that's the only downside to this. But for a cheap highlighter it is quite pretty but it's probably not gonna be a go-to for me. So moving on to the eyes, I have two different options for eyeshadow. So the first time I went into Primark, I picked up, ooh, I'm dropping them everywhere. I picked up the PS Matte Shadows in the shade Burnished Copper. And I also picked up the shade Fired Up. These were 90p each, and I also picked up a metallic one in Rose Gold. So I thought these three would go together really nicely to make quite a nice eye look. But then the second time I went into Primark, I came across this eyeshadow palette. Now this is called Sunset Beach. Again, it's from the PS range. And this is what the inside of it looks like. So I'm just going in with the shade Beach Sunset into my crease to start off with. Next I'm just going in with Fred Skies, which I'm popping in my crease just in a slightly smaller radius. Next I'm just going in with the shade Burnt Orange, just 
just over my lip. This is absolutely gorgeous, this shade. For my inner corner, I'm just going to go in with a little bit of coconut husk. I'm also just going to go in with one of the single shades in rose gold just to pop that over the lid again just to brighten it up a little bit. Ooh, that's pretty. And I'm just going to quickly go back in with that red sky shade and just pop that under my lash line. So that's my eyeshadow done. Now I think I forgot to say that this palette is £6 and I think for £6 these are actually quite pigmented shades, although there is a lot of kickback in the pan, which isn't really an issue, but there is a lot of fallout when you do put them on. So for eyeliner, I have a cold pencil in the shade Stargazer, which was only £1, and I'm just going to pop that in my waterline. Forgot what it was called then. Great job, Emily. So I must say this pencil didn't really work in my waterline, if anything the eyeliner has just kind of clumped up onto where my eyelashes are instead of actually going in my waterline properly so I'm going to give this a thumbs down. So for my winged eyeliner I am using the PS Fine Tip Eyeliner in black. So I just had to go off camera to finish my eyeliner quickly because my eyesight is terrible but I thought that this eyeliner for £1.50 it was alright, it was quite watery and when it came to doing the tip of the flick I found the liquid wasn't coming out properly so yeah quite watery, not something I would choose to use or would necessarily buy again but if you are on a budget and you need an eyeliner then this is all right, so the second to last thing that I bought for this video were some fake eyelashes, the double travel false eyelashes, and there is glue included, they are only one pound, and they look pretty damn nice for only one pound. So I didn't buy a mascara because I thought if I was testing lashes, I thought, why spend my money on a mascara when I could just save the extra three pounds? So I'm just going to go and pop on some of my own mascara and apply these lashes off camera because I never wear fake lashes so I have no hope of putting them on camera well. So I'll be back with you in a moment. So it's about 10 minutes later and I've kind of come to the realisation that I cannot get these lashes on. Now that could just be because I'm not used to putting lashes on so I'm not very good at it but it also could be the fact that they are cheap lashes and maybe that's what's interfering because I've never struggled this much to put lashes on but they are only one pound and if you're used to putting lashes on then I would still say to give them a try but the last thing for this video is not actually made by Primark but I did buy a lipstick twice but it never got scanned through both times at the checkout so I don't actually have a lipstick to finish off this look but what I do have is the Jelly Belly Tutti Fruity Lip Balm, which it says it's Primark exclusive, so it counts. So I'm gonna get away with it. So I'm just going to test that for you now. I'm just gonna pop that there. And I mean, it would have been great if it tasted like Tutti Fruity, but. It smells nice <laughs> but no it does feel like a very nice lip balm and if you like the smell of Tutti Fruity then it's great but don't expect it to taste like it even though I'm pretty sure it said it was Tutti Fruity flavoured yeah flavoured lip balm they're lying to me this doesn't taste of anything <laughs> but this is the complete look from my testing Primark makeup video I would definitely recommend some of the products like I said the blusher was really nice the bronzer was also nice foundation actually looks pretty good. I think if I moisturised first I don't think I would have had the problem with it clinging to a few of my dry patches 
Um, the only things that I wouldn't recommend were both of the eyeliners and again the fake lashes I think are something that you just need to try out for yourself because as I said I am no good at putting them on so that could just be my own fault. But I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Bye guys.